Hi there. Come on in. I'm Fred Trost. You might recognize what's behind me. I know you will if you're a steelhead fisherman. This is Tippy Dam, Consumers Power Dam here on the Manistee River, generating power for some people in the northwestern lower peninsula. Another thing it does, it backs up the steelhead. The steelhead can't go beyond this dam, so these rainbow trout that migrate out to Lake Michigan to get fat and sassy on alewives come all the way to the end of their spring spawning run and they are held right here below the dam. Lots of anglers here, not as many as there were earlier because the dam is putting water through the turbines, generating power, or it raised the water level. But you know down on the Little Manistee River, that's where the DNR has their weir, where they collect eggs from these rainbow trout as they're making their spawning run, collect millions of them to hatch in hatcheries, help supplement the natural reproduction we have here in Michigan. You know, Michigan has some of the best steelhead fishing in the world, these steelhead are fat and sassy, like I told you, averaging anywhere from four, six, eight pounds, not uncommon to catch. Their flesh is clean and tender and tasty. And I tell you, another thing is, the reason so many anglers are out here is because they fight. They twist, they turn. <laughs> They're a real kick to get on light line. A lot of these people are using light line, using all kinds of techniques. Why we found some people using bobbers with flies and live bait all at once. A lot of interesting techniques and a lot of interesting people. <laughs> We're going to go down and talk to them in just a minute. So you stay tuned. It's Thursday night. Time for Michigan Outdoors. From When you think about trout fishing in Michigan's rivers and streams, you normally think of anglers and waders stalking upstream, casting into the holes and under the log jams for those brook brown and rainbow trout that are looking for an easy meal. But in the larger rivers, like the Big Manistee, drift boats are not an uncommon sight. The anglers sit up front with the rods and holders, lines dropping back into the holes with tantalizing active lures such as flatfish, tadpoles, and hottentots. And the man on the oar in the stern position of the boat moves it back and forth with the oars in the current. Now, he's the only one who's, who's really fishing these holes. The other guys just watch the rods. It's an extremely enjoyable way to see the river, and you see lots of anglers on the river, most of them standing on the banks or up to their knees in the current, casting for those lake run rainbows that are now making one of the best spawning runs in history. Early morning is the preferred time on the Big Manistee just below Tippy Dam. The water has been at a stable flow all night long and at 9 or 10 in the morning consumers power will release water through the turbines to generate electricity during the day. This will stimulate downstream steelhead to swim towards the dam but that fast current makes fishing difficult. So these anglers are lining the banks on the stretch of river that well it's a favorite for steelhead so obviously it's a favorite for steelhead fishermen too. And here's the favorite technique. Cast the bait slightly upstream in the current, just above a hole where you think a steelhead might be holding. Favorite baits vary. Spawn, imitation spawn, wigglers or imitation wigglers, flies, even minnows and worms are used. And they're walked down the river, bounced along the bottom. And the split shot weight does get hung up frequently, but a little finesse with the rod usually works it loose. And when you feel a tap or a hesitation on the line, it might be a snag or a fish, so give the rod a jerk just in case. Well, nothing there, but when one hits, you'll know it. More often than not, the battling steelhead will try to find cover under one of the many logs and downed limbs that lie in the big manistee. But if you can keep your fish in open water, you can very well end up with an eight or 10 pound prize. That's the average size of the steelhead that have been coming through the weir on the little manistee this spring. Now, he's hiking up his waders just a little higher around his waist because he's fishing the south side of the river, but his car is on the north. So he's got to come back across and he hopes he doesn't step into a hole that's deeper than his waders. <laughs> what we have here is an angler coming back across the river with his steelhead. In fact, this is John Gandy from Morency. This is one part that can be a little treacherous in steelhead fishing. The current is moving very swiftly down the river. There's rocks on the bottom, snags. In fact, he just yelled over to us, uh, don't take his picture if he falls down and drowns. <laughs> we'll talk to him when he gets over here. You know, when I have a camera with me, I love to get shots of fishermen battling fish, but for some reason, I also find crossing a deep stream with swift current an activity that captures my attention. You know, I've taken water over my waders too many times to miss seeing how it's done from a distance, you know, somebody else. You never know if or now. when it might happen. How deep will it get? We don't even know if John knows. 
How much deeper is that going to get, John? <laughs> now, John knows he's on camera. He's going to be on Michigan Outdoors this Thursday night, and he's only inches, an inch or two, away from filling up his waders. <laughs> oh, this could be one of those golden moments. I think he's made it. On the other side of the river. That's right, but it paid off. Ah. Well, John, it looks like you did well. <laughs> oh, it took a while to cold fishing. Yeah, if I can give him more cable here. A couple hours you were out here? Yeah, it's about daylight. And this is the only one you've got? Yeah. Do you have any strikes? No, that's it. Now, this is the lure you're using. It flies, and that's, I guess, a spin glow, they call it, instead of a mm -hmm. wobble glow. With a double hook? How uh, we make them. It's a homemade. You buy the... Oops. You buy this uh, we'll get wobble it. glow, and then we put the hooks on it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Why do you use two hooks? You just figure it gives yeah, you twice as good a chance? They're hard to hook. they got a mm -hmm. tough mouth, so that works pretty good. And then you use a couple split shot up here on a dropper. Right. Well, it's uh, quite, quite swift right there in that one spot, so. Well, let's see that fish. Take a look at this. Yeah, that's a nice one. It's like a nice male. Well, that's, uh, they're just, just uh, coming in. They're, here, hold, hold, and... hold that a second there, John. Look at that right there on the side of that. Well, it looks like it's some time or another it's either been a snag place or a a growth of some kind, I don't want to do it. Yeah, it does look like a cut. Of course, snaggers have been in the river. Yeah, that's a male right here. In fact, you can see, mm -hmm. look on this anal fin here. We have the milt actually coming right out of the of the uh, steelhead, all ready to spawn. Right. That's why we're here. <laughs> okay, were you here yesterday? Come no, on up here a little bit. We just came in last night. Uh, what'd you, did you get anything last night? No, no. This is a, well, we just fished about an hour last night. Mm -hmm. This morning. What's, so. the, what's the trick to it? patience. Yeah. Man, just work at it. It's all you have to do. Well, now, all these other anglers down here are fishing, you know, on the north side of the river, and you walk across to the south. I get it to myself that way. I don't have to put up all the fishermen. I'd rather have the mm. more room. Well, hey, congratulations. Uh -huh. Nice fish. Uh -huh. <laughs> Most of those big manistee steelhead are caught in that period from sunrise to 9 a.m., but a good number are caught during the day as well, even with that high water from the dam. A surprising number of anglers use bobbers in the high water, something you normally think of using for panfish in the summer. But it's a technique that's caught on, and it's simple to do. John Plekas from Twin Lake shows how it's done. Just cast the wiggler about four feet below a stick bobber upstream, let it drift with the current, and as we 